Hey Periscope, Juliana Page here. We are on day 25 of our 30 days of Thanksgiving challenge. So we have been going through a challenge of finding ways to give thanks every day. So today I have something to be thankful for and I'm excited to share it with you. So without further ado, I'm going to start us in prayer and we'll dive right into this. So Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the life that we find in reading your word, Lord. And we thank you that we will find something that resonates with our spirit here and now. And we thank you, God, that you will do something meaningful with what is shared here. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, short, sweet, and to the point today. So the word that I have today is called spiritual pondering. Spiritual pondering. So I know that that is a strange way to think about what the actual word that we're going to talk about a little bit today is, and that is the word meditation. And I have had some experience with meditation in my past. I actually am a certified yoga instructor, so I went through a whole training just to learn how to meditate, but I want to challenge that because meditating on the word is actually quite different, and I really want to highlight that here because I do believe that it is somewhat a lost art, and we're not typically shown what it means and the value of it and how to do it. So that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time being thankful for today. Amen. So there is what, what meditation really is and what I'm proposing here is that it is a lifestyle of thinking intentionally. It's a lifestyle of thinking intentionally. And typically when we hear of meditation, we think of meditation as something that is emptying ourselves, that we are getting everything that's in our mind out of our mind so that there's just emptiness there. It's just a blank mind. But this is actually quite different. We're actually filling our minds and meditating on something different. So we're actually feeding ourselves with the Word of God. So it is a very active versus passive process, and it involves a lot of intentional headspace. Okay, so why is this important? So the very real reality of why this is important is there is a deceiver that is out to kill, steal, and destroy everything good about your life. And he starts by planting seeds in your mind to get you distracted, to get you to believe lies, to get you off track. Okay, so if you are not thinking right, if you are not getting full of the word of God and the sword of the spirit, quite literally the word, then you don't have anything to combat the enemy and you are ignorant to what he is up to in your life. And that is not a fun place to live. You do not want to live in ignorance when you have power and authority. Amen. So in, pa, let me see, in Proverbs 16, 9, it says, in their hearts, human plan their ways, but the Lord establishes their steps. So with this, we are, as, as who we are, naturally designed to think about things. That's how we're created. We have literally the mind of Christ. And so we are designed to think, but it is the Lord that establishes our steps. So we can think on a thing and we can work our way through a thing, but as we do that, we give it over to the Lord and he establishes the steps that we are to take so that they can be led and ordered by his grace and his covering, okay? So when you are meditating, you are actually in search of answers to obvious questions. So this is something that, like I was saying earlier, is not a passive thing. What's interesting is there is this effort in engaging the art of meditation, but it's not a force of going and pushing your own will and doing your own thing. There's the effort of committing to doing it. There's the effort of making time and space for it. There's an effort of getting yourself out of the way so that you can invite the Word of God into your space. You can invite the Spirit into your space. You can really allow time and undivided attention for this practice. And you really come to yourself before God and you come clean about whatever is in your mind, whatever's on your heart, whatever you are facing, whatever questions you are battling in your life, and you think and reason your way back to dignity, back to the divine understanding. So let's say you are struggling in a career, right? So rather than trying to lean on your own understanding, rather than seeking counsel of other people, open the word of God, just come clean before God. God, I am struggling in my career. God, I don't know what my next step is. God, reveal to me what is hidden in your word and that I need to know. And you will be led to a scripture that you will meditate on. 
and you will think on this and you will start to ask yourself, what is God saying here and what is God showing me specifically? And as you do that, different things will be revealed to you. And I will break this down a little bit more, but that's a basic understanding of how this works. It's not something that's rushed. It's something that you can literally spend time in. And if you really want to know what your next step is, I think you have time to spend with the Lord who knows what it is, right? So even Jesus reasoned his way out of trouble. So what makes you think that you don't have to do that? You need to be using your mind to navigate this life. It's one of your best assets as a man thinks in his heart so is he so whatever whatever you are thinking on whatever you are meditating on and this could be meditation could quite literally be what you are thinking on what you are dissecting and so it could be worry it could be fear but it should be the word of god if you really want to be led to success and prosperity so even David said in the word, thy word is the meditation all of my day. So he knew that this was literally his bread and butter. He knew that he could not live apart from the word of God. He couldn't have anything else directing his life. He just knew that. And he surrendered and submitted to the art of meditation. Okay, so here is an analogy that might help you think about meditation as well because it is not some new age woo woo word it's actually very practical so think about when you are eating food it's not just the eating of the food that brings you energy and that helps you to be in good health it's actually the proper digestion of that food right so if it's not something that your body can digest it's not healthy for you something to think about. So proper digestion of the word, it, you can't just hear it, you can't just read it and think that that's gonna be enough. You have to allow it to properly absorb into your system and be able to speak it when you need to use it most, right? So it's pondering over the words as you read it. It's really dissecting it as you read it and analyzing it and thinking on it and thinking on it and questioning it and digging into it and absorbing it and allowing it to make sense to you, allowing it to speak to you that helps you to become wise. It becomes your joy through doing this process because what happens is you begin to see what God sees and that gets you excited and you want to, to be in that clarity more and more throughout your life because it's really neat when you are in the dark and then suddenly you see. The eyes of your understanding are enlightened and you now know how to move forward. You now know what your next step is and that is a very exciting feeling. It's like if you are creative when you just fall into that flow and it just starts flowing and it just starts working. It's a very similar experience. So you have if you didn't know, you have a well or a reservoir of insight on the inside of you, but it doesn't come out of you if it's not tapped into, if it's not called forth, if it's not spoken into being, it does not come out of you. It just stays dormant on the inside of you. So you can get into this word and study it enough and read it and hear it enough so that it makes whatever's on the inside of you come alive and come out of you and into your life. Okay, so out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So if you can get out of your heart the word of God and speak it into being, you can see it in your reality. Very powerful, very powerful. So as you're reading, some great questions to ask are, what is God saying here? What was he literally saying in this verse? And then what is he showing me? Why have I been brought to this verse? How does this apply to my life right now? How is this practical today for me? What do I now do? What is the Lord telling me to do with this verse? What is he saying? Amen. Next, there is, literally, if you didn't know, there is an answer to every question that you have in this word. And if you make it your desire to seek it with all of your heart, you will find that answer. God will reveal it to you. So you can look to heaven quite literally for all of the answers that you are struggling to find. And the struggle doesn't have to be a struggle. It could be something that is revealed to you. It can be something that is uh, divinely illuminated to you. It's something that you engage your mind in a process of and it comes to you. And however long it takes, sometimes you can fast so you have greater clarity. You don't have food and coffee and caffeine and sugar spiking your energy levels. And you can really hear God better when you are fasting because you literally... Just submit your body to 
being fed by the word alone, not by actual food and distractions. You just can hear with fine-tuned insight when you're not distracted by all those other things. So that's a great way. Um, but just really starting by setting aside that time, starting by making a commitment, having a made-up mind and showing up to what you committed to and letting whatever is meant to be revealed to you be revealed. Okay, so let's talk about the word that, that makes this practical, that makes this true, because you don't want to just take me at my word. You want to make sure that you're actually getting some truth. So let me back it up here. So we're talking about spiritual pondering and the gift of that and why we can be so thankful for the gift of meditation. So, okay, let's think about this. It's like spiritual digestion. Let's say that. So here are some places in the word that you can go back to and that you can meditate on so you can see how this applies to you. So the first one is coming from 2 Timothy 2 verse 7 and it says this, consider what I say for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Amen. If there's anything to be grateful for, it's understanding because Life is crazy. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of overwhelm. There's a lot of things coming against us. There's a lot of attacks against us. There's a lot of things that we don't understand. There's a lot of things that we just cannot navigate on our own. But if you consider what the Lord says, he will give you understanding in everything. Amen. So the catch here, though, is consider what he's saying. And so we do that by meditating on what he says. And by asking, what is he saying here? And what is he showing me and what he's saying here? The next one is coming from Job 22, 22. And it says, please receive instruction from his word and establish his words in your heart. So we are being advised to receive instruction from his word and establish it in our hearts. And so establish it means get it rooted, get it firmly planted in your heart. And you can't do that simply by hearing it, and you can't do that simply by reading it. If you've ever had to study for an exam, for example, when you first hear the teacher telling you something or writing something on the board, maybe it just goes in one ear and out the other. Or maybe you read your homework, but it's not locked into your memory. You don't remember it the next day when you need to apply it. So the actual practice of meditating on what the word says, on what a verse says, and you break down the individual parts of it and you start thinking on it and you start applying, how does this relate to me? What is it really designed to reveal to me right now? How do I move forward with this new information? As you start doing that process, however long it takes, <laughs> block an hour if you have to, but however long it takes, sometimes it can be days, but just make sure if you really desire to know the answer to a thing that you allow the time and the space to go through that process of discovering the answer. Okay, just like you would study for an exam to get a certain grade, you will seek the Lord and you will read the word and you will meditate on it and you will allow himself to reveal himself to you. And you will find that answer and then you can listen to it and have understanding in everything. Okay, so Job said, please receive instruction from his word and establish his words in your heart. Don't let them fall in deaf ears. Amen. So then Joshua 1.8 says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that it says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Did you hear all that? Let's break it down a little bit. <laughs> I'll let you fully do it, but it's coming from Joshua 1.8. This book of the law should not depart from your mouth. So this is the only stuff that you want coming out of your mouth. You don't want to curse your life. You don't want to speak death over your life. You want to speak life. And so the word of God is literally life. Choose life and choose to speak it over your life. Meditate on it. How do you do that? You meditate on it day and night so that it gets in you. It gets established in your heart. It gets planted and rooted there so it can come out of your heart. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. So as you meditate on it, as you read it, as you think on it day and night, you can then use it as discernment. It will literally tell you, is this of God or is this not of God? And then you can make decisions about what to do. Is this for me? Does God want me to move forward or does he want me to not do that? 
right? You can start getting that and be careful to do all that it says. As you do what the word says, your way is made straight. Amen. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. So as you let this word get in you and as you speak it over your life and are careful to do what it says, then your way will be prosperous and then you will have success. Amen. Okay, so be careful with that one. Practice that one. Meditate on that one. <laughs> All right. And really what is happening is when we settle on the word of God, when we settle on a scripture, when we settle on a verse, what happens is God starts to reveal himself. He says, come, let us reason, right? So as you meet with God and as you start having a discussion with him and coming clean before him and saying, I'm emptying myself of me, show me what you would have me know, right? He will reveal himself to you. And it's on you to make the time for that and to really receive what is what is revealed to you in that time. Okay. Now this last one here is Luke six twelve, and it says, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent all night praying to God. So again, if Jesus has to do this and if Jesus made it his heart's intent, he sought the Lord with all of his heart. That is the example to follow. And here is some great wisdom. And this is coming from Psalm 119.97. Okay. And it says this, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for your words are ever before me. I have better understanding and deeper insight than all my teachers because your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged because I keep your precepts, hearing them, receiving them, loving them, and obeying them. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep your word, that I might keep hearing it, receiving it, loving it, and obeying it. I have not turned aside from your ordinances, for you yourself have taught me. So this is teaching us that if we are wandering in the dark, if we are stuck, if we feel like we don't see our way or we don't know how to get through something, we can make it our practice to run to the word of God, to make that time to, to really get before him, to come clean before the Lord and let him reveal himself to us. Let him divinely illuminate what the word is saying. He will show us what we need to, to know and direct us in the way we should go. So as you in, engage your mind to enhance your spiritual understanding by meditating on these things, and it says here, which is so beautiful, I hear it, I'm receiving it, I'm loving it, and I'm obeying it. So that's not a quick work. It's not just like going through a drive through <laughs> and getting what you want and then leaving. This is something that I'm prepared to show up for however long this takes. Amen? And so as we do that, the word is literally a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So God promises to use his word to instruct us in the way we should go one step at a time. So what we have to be grateful for is this gift of meditation, this gift of spiritual pondering, this gift of being in relationship with our great counselor, our guide, our director, who knows the way and shows us how to walk in it. Amen. So I hope this message blessed you. I hope this inspires you to absorb the truth of God's word and really apply it to your life in a practical and a very real way so that you can share your testimony and what you learn with other people. All right. So this is day 25 of our 30 days of giving thanks challenge. And I hope today that you give thanks for the gift of meditation. All right, everybody have a great day. Bye.